Hello YouTubers, we're back again. As you can see what flashing is the um, is an old railroad crossing signal. This railroad crossing was the uh, Western Railroad Supply Company, it was the manufacturer, and these were produced in about the 1930s, as you can see on this paragraph. And this was the real innovation of the, of the signals that we use today. They have the flashing warning devices to let everyone know a train is coming. Um, now this, the stop on red signal, would be lit at night, especially when it was dark and nobody could see. That would be, that would be on red while these two lights were red, and they would be flashing when the train would come. So that's just a little fun fact about that signal, if you're very much wondering. So, all right. We're actually going to go outside and look at the real nitty gritty. Okay, you see, now we are outside the museum, as you can see, and I'm pretty much right now pretty amazed. There's a few little surprises out here that I'm not going to give away yet. See right up here is an old Western Maryland um, F7. Number 236, and these were produced in about the 40s and 50s for a lot of the different railroads. As you can see, it's in uh, the original paint scheme of Western Maryland. It was in the black and yellow before going to red and white and black. As you can see up here, we have a transformer, Pennsylvania Transformer Division. As you can see, it's an old Western Maryland car. That was produced in night that was made in 1958. And as you can see here, we have an old Western Maryland caboose. Now this caboose here, I will have to say, this is in the newer scheme of Western Maryland. It was in one of the better schemes too. Just look at that. That's just incredible. There's the old Baltimore and Ohio. Uh, another one of those bud cars and there's some more locomotives and stuff over there and we're going to actually go walk back and we're going to go take a look this is incredible of what you've seen in the roundhouse and what you have seen on the on the outside of the museum and the inside which is pretty sweet of what this museum can do uh, just, the roundhouse was built in I think the 30s and it was widely used by the Baltimore, Ohio for many, many years. And then, of course, it was turned over to the city, and of course, they took over. And I'm glad they have preserved this area of history, because this railroad is full of, full of history. So, as we walk up, it's slippery out here today. As you can see here, there are some passenger cars. And now we're coming up on some more engines. First up, we're going to come across this repainted Baltimore, Ohio uh, GP30. As you can see here, number 6944. I don't know if this paint scheme was the earliest one. I don't remember. But this was recently repainted. I think they're getting it ready to, to service it up. Man, really pretty paint scheme. old antique passenger cars. There's a set of steps down here which we'll get to here in just a minute. This is all pretty sweet. There's a little bit of stuff over on the other side we'll get to in just a minute or so. We're actually going to go take a look at one of these passenger cars. You can see lots of room in there, as you can see. Too. 
right now we're going to head back and we're going to see if we can try to get to the other side. There's a couple of old cranes on an old caboose that's sitting over there. And there's an old GP9. I think they're going to crank up that GP30. Yes, he is! Well, ladies and gentlemen, what you just witnessed was the starting off of an old GP30. And this guy is getting ready to get a train ride going um, for some of the visitors who want to. These were good engines in their days. And I will have to say this, a lot of these were bought by Baltimore and Ohio, and they eventually went over to Chassis. But uh, CSX has some that are still active today, but they've been degraded, they've been downgraded to road slugs. I'm going to let you listen to it for just a few minutes so you can listen to the prime mover of a serious GP30. As you can see right here, is an old GP9 locomotive. Built for Baltimore, Ohio and one of the older paint schemes. There's a couple of more passenger cars were built for the Baltimore, Ohio. And now we're here at a crossover here and some more stuff. And there's lots of stuff on this section here. We're going to come across a, an old Pearl Marquis unit. Probably an SW1 switcher. Was built, for, for, built by EMD. See, it's pretty too. I'm glad that they have preserved a lot of these engines. I'm glad they have. Because you're not seeing so many of these anymore. You really aren't. Some old tanker cars. Another Chesapeake and Ohio passenger car. There is a model railroad exhibit in here. Now take a look at this, ladies and gentlemen. As you can see here is where the old platform is. Baltimore, Ohio, and the Chessy Steam Special. This is like, this is downtown Baltimore, as you can see. We do have a few trains running, too. Chessy um, um, SW2 switcher with a slug. And look at that. He's lowering the container onto that uh, trailer, which is pretty cool. Baltimore, Ohio switcher here at the terminal. Baltimore, Ohio SD nine with the coal drag and the old color positioning signals and we have a Baltimore Ohio F7 coming our way he just stopped right there for just a minute because he has a red signal see there goes the another Baltimore Ohio passenger train And now we come across, you can see this Baltimore, Ohio unit is just pushing cars back to the mine to get filled. There's a B&O switcher that's tucked in. There's a little, little couple industrial switchers, like right there, you see he's pushing some stuff into the plant. And while the 44 ton switcher is going ahead. As you can see there, that's where he stopped. He's getting the coal loaded and they'll take it back. This is a pretty neat little exhibit that you'll see. It's very nicely detailed. And you can see here's another Baltimore, Ohio uh, freight train. And watch him as he goes under the bridge. 
they've really spent a lot of time on this layout. It's, it's incredible. And here goes the passenger train. Comes the freight that stopped. Sounds like one of the engines is moving outside. You gotta go the other way. But this is incredible what they've done on this layout. As you can see, this is just remarkable of what they do. There's a meat. Jeep that's been running, he's been doing his brake test and stuff like that. But so you can see we've come around. We'll go in the north car shop in just a few minutes, but we're gonna come on down the ramp. And what we're gonna do is loop back around and we're gonna see where the cranes and the cabooses that are back here. See, here's another one of those old cranes, as you can see. One of these old cranes that used to pick up the ties or put the new one in place. An old Western Maryland box car, and there's a chesty caboose that's back there. And we're going to come up on some older cars, some old Pullmans, too. There's old dining cars. Let's see if we can duck in here and see what's going on. Oh, this is one of the sleepers. You guys got to come in here. Now, we'll just take a look at this. It's one of these old sleeper cars. Here's where you would sleep for the night. This is where you would buckle up. It's pretty sweet. Amtrak's been doing a lot of this too. And this was actually during the military age when they really used the train back in the day. This is pretty awesome here. And that's where the military guys used to sleep. As you can see what's back there you've already seen. It's just a view from up here. But Anyway, that concludes this section of the museum. We're going to go inside the North Car Shop. Alrighty, we'll be back in just a little bit.